But you came by on the way. Nick Drake uh, was a young man who I first met when he was about 19. He was a songwriter, guitar player, of a kind of extraordinary originality and ability who's was very introverted and shy, therefore not much of a stage presence, and his music didn't reach an audience when it first came out, and that depressed him. And in the years since then, little by little, every year, more and more people come to love his music. Um, I think we've probably listened to Pink Moon, what, maybe a few thousand times? <laughs> well, I think one of the uh, most special things about his music is that uh, it's I mean, it's extremely complicated and um, he's a very accomplished player, but the thing that's so um, beautiful for me is that it's a very emotional music. The reason I think that his music has been so lasting is because it's terribly, terribly good. Um, and I think that there's also something about, you know, obviously artists who, who are no longer with us. There's this, um, there's this mystique to them and um, this desire to dig up as much as you can about them. So many people have been influenced by it. You know, he sang beautifully but quietly, played very intricate guitar parts, wrote songs that were kind of about isolation and about looking at life from the outside. Really unusual, rich melodies and harmonies. And he's kind of a one-off, you know, but a cult figure these days. And the reason there's no film is because he was so unsuccessful, it was so unknown that nobody was clamoring to film it. I had a production company in London in the 60s, and he came in and played me some music, and I signed him up to my production company, etc. Through that company, he made three uh, records. I mean, I expected the music to reach a wide audience when it first came out. And like Nick, uh, I was very disappointed that it didn't. What took everybody so long? Um, because to me, it's sort of obvious that you would love this music. Day one storm. And it was I think that Nick's music is, well, for one thing, it, it stands outside its time. So the fact that it didn't reach an audience in the 60s means that for generations that have come afterwards, they don't have the baggage attached to it. It's freed it up to be discovered anew by new generations. About two and a half years ago, I got an invitation from the Birmingham Town Hall in Britain, and, and the town where Nick grew up was in the countryside not far from Birmingham. And they asked me to put together a tribute concert. We put together a great band with Danny Thompson, who played with Nick on bass. And it just worked. His playing is incredibly intricate, as well as his vocal timing. His timing is pretty uh, complicated, so uh, we really just uh, had to sit with them a bit and, and try and kind of get them into our own voices and our own instruments. Please give me a second grace. Please give me a second face. I've fallen far down. Nick would have been delighted with Best what's happened. I mean, I think he always wanted to reach an audience, you know. Um, I think in his quiet way, he was quite ambitious, but he didn't have that personality that could sort of charm an audience. When I listen to his words, I'm listening to somebody very literate, with a real sense of the language. He was very troubled and very disturbed and very unhappy. And, and so I've, that's the way I feel it, is just the sadness of, of, of somebody that I was very fond of who um, wasn't able to pull out of, you know, uh, uh, a dive, a psychological dive, and, and save himself. 
What you have to share